it's a pretty lovely lovely good evening from here in Chile and hope as always that each one of you are keeping absolutely absolutely fine and you all are happy and of course in fine spirits so on such count we start today's this particular session and you must have noticed by now that what exactly this session is going to be all about isn't it or not of course the theme of this particular session is preparation and strategy for CFR correct so we would love to actually go through some strategical framework so that we can actually come out with the flying colors that is the basic objective and aim behind what we call taking up this particular session here in this particular session we are going to talk a lot about what we call various precise solid strategies that which would help you as i just told you earlier so that you can come out with a supreme amount of performance correct so lots of messages actually i was receiving since the day actually i uploaded and uh, uploaded a video on the same what we call topic in hindi medium so i received lots of messages especially from the southern region and the eastern regions and students uh, student fraternity were virtually clamoring so you should come out in english medium also with such videos so we have adhered to your request and today we are taking this particular session now coming to the point corporate financial reporting of course it is being perceived as a sort of what we call subject which sometimes give a little bit of jitters to the student fraternity this is what i have noticed but at the same time let me tell you if you have got a very good sound conceptuality of this particular subject i can assure you you can come out with a with a solid performance supreme amount of performance that in this particular subject could instead of be instead of being perceived as dreaded one can be what we call perceived as one which is high scoring so anyway i have already gone through lots of preface now we come straight to the point so how to actually go about cfr as far as cfr this particular paper is concerned for that instance if any paper is concerned especially at this level final level first of all as a first step to have a very good sound uh, what we call planning you need to go through the syllabus very insightfully it is very important for you to dig deep into the syllabus notice each and every gamut every point of the syllabus which has been actually forwarded to you by your institute correct it is very important to have a very good idea as far as what we call syllabus is concerned so often to my experience i have noticed that a student tend to neglect this particular point uh, later on in the examination suddenly they come across a question and they start claiming that this question came out of syllabus but the fact was that the question was from syllabus but you didn't bother to have a look over that particular point so first of all it is important to go through the entire syllabus very deeply very closely and keep the what we call contents in your mind once you have gone through the syllabus once you have gone through the syllabus the next step should be try to actually do a bit of analysis regarding that when I say try to do a bit of analysis regarding that, what my point is, you have to focus very hard and you try to actually segregate the entire syllabus now into some segment. For example, after having gone through the syllabus, you need you should be in a position to segregate out the topics which are of practically which are of practical oriented and likewise topics which are theoretical oriented and because at this level you have to study indias so you have to keep an eye over the topics which are purely related to indias that is what my point is once you have gone through very insightfully and very penetratively over the entire syllabus the next point is that you have to segregate them into practical part and the theoretical part and into part which is related to indias once you have done that now what is the next step under the third step now try to have a look over the part which you have segregated as practical one try to give a sort of what we call order try to visualize which are the important one never say that which are the unimportant one because nothing is unimportant at this particular level remember one thing so you have to just simply give them a sort of order preference order that which chapter you will do first which later on that is the only point that in which is the most important after which which is the important one and so on correct similarly you take care of the theoretical chapter also while doing the what we call analysis of the theoretical chapter you need to keep an eye over the pattern of the examination that is also very important because so often in the uh, what we call examination we have find and especially we have found because so far till up to this particular point of time three at a, i think two attempts have already gone by with respect to the new syllabus isn't it or not the the first uh, examination took place i think uh, 
in the month of June or July and then, then it was in December and of course that been two attempts have already gone by with respect to what we call new slavers. So try to analyze the pattern. Now if you realize the pattern you must have noticed actually it's so many now objective questions or MCQ questions are being asked. So try to actually have a look which are the which are the MCQs which examiner is giving more of what we call a little bit preference as far as theory in the context of the theoretical chapter is concerned. So this is how you have to analyze the theoretical chapter that which are the chapter which are in demand as far as MCQ is concerned. Correct? So these are the three vital steps. The first is that you have to do a very penetrative analysis of the syllabus. Second, once you have gone through that, you have to segregate the what we call syllabus into three parts. Correct? One practical oriented chapter, theoretical oriented chapter, and as I told you, your NDS part. Once you have done that, you have to give them a preference order that which chapter is most important after which we are going to do that in a sort of preference order. Even after having gone through all this step, now the next step is how to do this chapter, how to have a complete, comprehensive command and a very good amount of solid and formidable knowledge regarding what we call each content of the syllabus. Obviously for that, you will have to either study extremely hard and there is what we call nothing bad about it. But at the same time, you can supplement it with very good tutorial lecture series. That means you need to actually have a good what we call lecture series, the lectures of a very good faculty. When I say to good tutorial series, it means you need to have a series of lectures of a very competent faculty, number one. Number two, equally you need to have a very compatible, solid, formidable, up-to-date study material. Because you must have noticed actually in the examination, if you'll, especially if you'll have a look over the questions which were tossed off from the Indians, your module study was not sufficient to handle those questions. Because in the module which of the institute, what we saw actually there are many Indians where hardly only one or two illustration or case studies were given. Yet in the examination we saw lots of case studies were asked and which weren't there in the institute's material. So point here is that, so institute has given you that these are the Indians in your part but at the same time now it is your duty to actually go, go through what we call that particular Indians in a very comprehensive manner. So point here is that, that is why I'm telling that you need to have very good lecture series. At the same time, you need to have a very good resource material in the form of a very good material which can cover entire gamut of not only your module, but also of all the dimensions of the examination questions which may be tossed up. That is what my point is. Is it clear to you or not? So this is how you need to develop the strategy. When we say strategy, Indirectly, it means we need to have a such foolproof planning that we are not going to leave any loopholes so that ultimately we may have to repent. So the point here is that we need to have such a surgical, precise planning so that we are going to come out as so often now during this particular lecture series, I've already told you, so that we can come out with a flying color. Correct? So, whatever I have said so far, now I will try to put into practicality and try to make you understand what my points were. First of all, this is the syllabus. Of course, as I told you, your first step should be to should be to go through the syllabus and you need to take into account what are the contents of the syllabus. For example, if we go through your syllabus, what we find, your institute has given to you, first of all, is specific accounting standards. An institute has allotted 25% marks to it. Honestly speaking, <clears throat> this allotment of mark is of no, no use because hardly we have seen that institute is offered a distance any institute or any organization actually adheres to that. They have allotted it is fine. Now the point here is that as you know there are many Indians but at this particular level what they have given you 12 Indias. So 12 Indias you will have to study at this particular level. Correct? It is not a very big task and many but unfortunately what I have seen actually student fraternity often gets unnecessarily jitters the moment actually they hear the word Indias. Uh, Indias is uh, nothing uh, <clears throat> what we call dreaded thing rather you have to embrace it you have to embrace it very with both the open-handed because the knowledge of indias will help you later on in succeeding and enhancing your career prospects once you are going to enter into the practical arena so accounting policy changes in accounting estimates and error it's a very small standard but anyway right now actually i'm simply going i'm not analyzing at this particular moment i'm simply going through the first step the first step is that we have to go through the entire syllabus 
So as far as this particular section is concerned, which comprises of 25% mark, I have already told you this particular section uh, contains the index which you will have to study. For example, your next index is income taxes. <clears throat> index 12, quite obviously, it's a little bit tougher standard and property, plant and equipment. It is, it is long, lengthy, but not tough. Lease is quite obviously is a little bit formidable standard. Then we have India's 21 dealing with effects of changes in what we call foreign exchange rates, then borrowing cost, then impairment of asset, intangible asset, share based payment. Now here you will have to keep an idea. As I told you, once you will go through the US levels, you should be in a position to try to segregate, correct, which are the topic or contents which are of purely practical oriented. Now this NDS is nothing but a sort of practical chapter. As we will see later on that, I will include this particular NDS rather than under the category of NDS, I will include it under the category of practical chapters. Is it clear to you? Now, besides that, and this, and this is a very important chapter. If we are going to have a look over the what we call last two returns, we found out that almost every attempt contained the question from what we call share based payment. So on that count, this particular chapter itself becomes very important. So quite obviously, you need to focus very hard as far as this particular chapter is concerned. Coming over to the point, next one is operating segment. This is similar to your AS17, which you have done. Fair value measurement, it's a very important what we call sort of standard. Uh, both from the perspective of the examination and also from the perspective of the fact that when later on you are going to become what we call <coughs> a real professional in life. So often you will have to deal with the fair value concept. So that is the reason and it should work as a motivating factor for you to avoid that you should pay more attention to this particular one. The revenue from contracts with customer is a very important standard, very important standard, but I will give the order later on. Correct. And then now your next topic contains there is section B. This is the syllabus is what we call issued by the institute. As far as section B is concerned here, you are going to study actually four chapter, four practical chapters, but these are very smaller chapter. One valuation of shares and valuation of goodwill. These two chapters are very vital because almost in every uh, examination in the last two attempts, because as far as new syllabus is concerned, only two attempts have gone by, as I've already told you, in both the attempts, we saw actually questions from valuation of goodwill and valuation of shares. In fact, both these are quite vital. Then accounting for financial instruments, it's a pretty interesting chapter, and then NBFC, non-banking financial company. So these four chapters you will have to study under this particular unit. And so all these are in fact practical chapters, which I will collaborate for you later on. Then section C. It is a very formidable section because it contains a very formidable, very important, very big and lengthy chapter that is business combination, correct? And the name of the chapter actually is business combination and restructuring. But point here is that when we are going to study this particular chapter, as I told you and why I told you in the beginning itself, that you have to go through the contents of the syllabus very closely, very deeply and with a very penetrative eye. Why? Because when we will go through this particular content, we'll find actually that not only we will have to do this chapter business combination and restructuring, but under this heading, we will have to do another chapter that is amalgamation of companies. Why we will have to do amalgamation of companies? Because this particular index, this particular index in the content also covers AS14. So AS14 deals with amalgamation and we will have to do amalgamation chapter also to be on the safer side because the questions which were tossed up in the examination, especially in the last two attempts, correct, June and December 23, although the question were given in the light of NDS and NDS 103, but it was virtually impossible to, uh, impossible to do those questions if you would not have had done what we call amalgamation. So that's the reason. And similarly, internal reconstruction, you will have to do internal reconstruction, correct? Also known as capital reduction, internal reconstruction. So in this particular unit, as I told you, internal reconstruction, they have written very specifically and here AS14 is written. That is the reason actually why I'm telling you that under this unit, we will have to do three things. One business combination, very comprehensive, long and big chapter. I have already told you besides that amalgamation and internal reconstruction and both are very, very vital. Correct. Both these chapters are very vital. Even from internal reconstruction, to be very honest with, honest with you, we received question in each of the attempts which took place as far as new syllabus is concerned. Now, coming over to the section D. Section D is pretty interesting one because it deals with consolidation, consolidated financial statement. 
Now, of course, the marks allotted 20%. And recently, we got a question in the examination. That question contained 14 marks. 14 mark question was there. And it was not very tough, to be very honest with you. But uh, anyway, the consolidated financial statement is a pretty strong chapter. I have already told you. And so many topics are there. Uh, so you will have to keep an eye over this particular chapter. But important point is that, which I just want to bring to your notice, if I will go through the entire content, Correct. Just to save the time, I'm not going there, over that. But point is that when you will go through the entire context, suddenly you will find that even though consolidated financial statement basically is dealt by India's 110, no doubt about it, India's 110 governs the entire consolidation procedural aspects. But besides that, we may have to do India's 111 in this particular. Besides India's 110, India's 110 means consolidation. Besides that, we will have to do India's 111 also. And we need to have a good idea regarding what we call India's 28 also. Correct? And you need to have a little bit of idea regarding India's 27. That means when we are going to do India's 110, that is consolidated financial statement, just to play safe, we will do all these three India's also, along with this particular chapter. Reason being is that, if you will notice, in the recently concluded examination and solution to which I am the only faculty right now, actually, who has already delivered the solutions, both in Hindi medium and English, English version. You must have noticed, we have given the solutions of December 23 also and December what we call um, in English medium and of course in what we call Hindi version. So, you, you will notice over there that questions were asked even from what we call these standards. If some of, uh, if some among us did not go through this particular standard, obviously, in the examination, they, I'm, I do not, I'm not very sure whether they were in a position to attend the questions or not. So that's the reason, actually, when at this level we do study, we have to do it very comprehensively and we have to leave nothing to chance. So on such objectives and on such policies, if you are going to work upon, I'm very sure that each one of you are going to come out with what you got tremendous amount of performance, correct, which will surprise yourself also. And now the next unit is actually titled as recent developments in financial reporting obviously with the passage of the time something new concepts are coming up and cropping up although there are lots of topics are written over there out of these topic to be very honest with you 90 percent is almost theoretical and these theoretical chapter are of very small nature hardly one or two pages have been devoted and even in some chapter hardly half pages devoted by the module so here you need not require to worry a lot that you will have to do so much of theory. But point here is that whatever theory you are going to do, you will have to do it deeply in the sense because lots of MCQs, as I told you earlier also, are being tossed up from these topics. Correct? Now, 4P bottom line. 4P bottom line, we will study later on what exactly is this 4P bottom line. And then it's a theoretical chapter. Half page is devoted by the module to this particular chapters. All this chapter, each chapter will hardly consume six or seven minutes to get over, to be very honest with you. Very simple, very small. Sustainability reporting and global reporting initiative. In fact, I have just told you that these are the lately developed, recently developed topics, correct? Uh, because in during the traditional times, uh, from the perspective of an entity, the profitability used to be considered as the biggest bottom line. Bottom line means the objective. The basic objective of the entity is to earn the profit. But off late, the objectives of the concerns of the organization or the corporate world is changing. It is changing because of the pressures put in by the investors. Because nowadays, investors, before they invest their money into a particular concern, they are not taking into account only the profitability criteria. There were times earlier. Traditionally, it used to happen that as an investor, I would love to invest what we call in a company which would deliver me or fetch me the highest amount of return. That means prof profitability was the main criteria. But now from the perspective of the investors also, the scenario has changed. Why? Because nowadays we are hearing a lot about the global warming, the climatic situation, the climatic crisis, should I say, the environmental issues, the pollution emission, and so all these things. So because of this now directly or indirectly as i told you the pressure is being put upon the corporate sector the business sector both by the investors group investors group when i say it means the parties who are having stakes or interest in a concern correct or or the parties who are thinking of investing their money into a particular concern and besides the regulatory bodies also they are putting pressure upon the corporate sector that 
okay, you continue with your what we call bottom line or profitability, but supplement it with what we call some social concerns also. So these are the lately developed concepts regarding which actually you will study. So basic idea of the institute, it seems, is to make you acquaint with all these what we call issues, correct? So business responsibility and sustainability report and then integrated reporting. I have already told you, each chapter will not consume more than five or ten minutes, correct? So, and similarly, but among these theoretical chapter, you will have to pay extra attention to this chapter, corporate social responsibility reporting in India, because lots of MCQs are being asked from this particular chapter. Environmental social governance, hardly five minutes chapter. Human resource reporting, hardly five minutes chapter. Now, out of this theoretical chapter, I have already told you, just I told in the beginning and why I told you in the beginning, so that later on things become quite easy for you. We will see later on that I have included value added statement and economic value added in the practical section. Correct? Why? Because even though these are recently developed phenomena, recently developed phenomena means besides preparing their profit and loss account balance sheet cash flow statement and changes in equity statement, the entity nowadays are preparing value added statement, economic value added, market values added statement. And very surprisingly, very surprisingly, we saw that in both the attempts, questions were there from this particular, this, uh, these particular topics, both value added statement and economic value added and market value added. So that is the reason we will include these two chapter in the practical section rather than what we call in the theoretical section. Correct? So now the next one is reporting to XBRL. So all over the world, the time has become very precious and people are left over a little bit of time. Correct? That's the point. So nowadays, instead of doing lots of paperwork, compiling, filing, and their what we call financial statement with the various regulatory bodies. So this XBRL, you will uh, later on what we call learn about that. It is nothing but it is sort of a software. You can say whereby actually you can similarly in a very quick time, you can uh, file your returns, uh, returns and the financial statement to the various regulatory bodies. So that helps a lot in saving the time, correct? And quarterly earnings call management. Quarterly earnings call, call management is the latest developed phenomena in the what we call corporate world. Quarterly earnings call management, we will see under this particular chapter. Again, it is hardly four or five minutes chapter whereby you will learn that nowadays companies in order to intimate the investors and the stakeholders regarding their financial performance do conference what we call meetings whereby in there was a time earlier when entity used to publish their financial statements correct in the leading newspapers or magazines but now they have recognized the time instead of publishing their financial statement they still publish but in order to give a quick what we call review of their financial performance of their quarter ended they simply take make a direct call to the what we call investors so this is known as quarterly earnings call management and it is growing by leaps and bounds in india nowadays so these are your theoretical chapters but out of this we, we have seen that value added statement and what we call economic value added we will include under the practical category correct besides that we have got government accounting and government accounting is completely theoretical oriented, but this is a little bit longer in comparison to other theoretical chapter, correct? So that is the reason you will have to pay extra attention, even though it is theoretical chapter, but it has got lots of concepts, both MCQs and what we call theoretical questions are being asked in the examination from this particular unit. So once you have gone through in its entirety, correct, over the syllabus, now, we should be in a position to segregate them, which are the practical, which are the theoretical, correct, and what portion comprises purely of India's. So, this is my book also, correct. Those who will subscribe to our courses, obviously, they will be handed over this particular book. This is volume one. I have written corporate financial reporting, volume one, practical chapters, correct, and concept dozier and illustrated question world. So, this particular uh, book contains what we call as far as practical chapters are concerned, and besides that, all the concepts and lots of questions, lots of questions. And we take pride in giving you the maximum number of questions if you, are, if you are going to ask and from your what we call friends, then they will definitely let you know or regarding the number of questions which we do in the class and the sort of questions we do in the sense in the class. Correct. Uh, I need not require to make an arrogant remark regarding uh, the fact that the question paper of newsletters was in its, in its entirety from almost, almost, 
in its entirety was from the materials which we have supplied to the student. Anyway, as far as practical chapters are concerned, correct? In the practical chapters, I have already told you business combination we are going to study. And when we are going to study business combination, I have already told you it's a pretty important chapter, formidable one, a very long one also, correct? Nearly 60 questions, 60 in class question I'm talking about, we are going to cover over here. And then we will also do amalgamation and internal reconstruction, correct? Besides that consolidation, I have already talked a lot about consolidation. When we say consolidation, it means consolidated financial statement. Not only India is 110, we will do, I have already told you, along with that, we are going to do India's 111, India's 28 and 27 also. Share-based payment, you must have noticed actually, the institute has included this as a part of India's, but we have included it as a part of what we call practical chapter because we think actually it is more of a practical chapter. Correct? So that is the reason. And very important all these chapters are, in fact, all the chapters are important. You can leave nothing to chance, to be very honest with you. I have already told you, you have reached a level where the chances of being selective is going to be very, very are very dangerous. Valuation of goodwill and valuation of share, I told you earlier. Then NBFC, non-banking financial company, it's a small chapter. Financial instrument, you will have to study. Even in this examination, we had a question and the question was in our study material also. And I have already told you value added statement and economic value added and market value added statement. We are considering these chapter as practical chapters. So these are the practical chapters which you will have to do. And I have written them in order of what we call preference. That means we will do first business combination and or logically instead of saying we, you should do business combination, then consolidation, share based payment and so on. So this is also the preference order. This is our volume one also. Then in the second volume, second volume deals with theoretical chapters. This is my second volume, corporate financial reporting, volume two, theoretical chapters. Correct. Concept dozier plus case studies world. So in this particular volume, we have covered what we call all the theoretical chapters. I have already told you 4E bottom line, sustainability reporting, global reporting initiative, then business responsibility, sustainability reporting, integrated reporting, corporate social reporting. Out of this theoretical chapter, just a moment ago, I also told you CSR is vital. You have to pay a little bit extra attention in comparison to other. Then environmental social issue is uh, quite very simple. And then human resource accounting, all these are very simple one. Then again, you will have to pay extra attention towards XBRL, correct, extended business reporting language as, as we call it. And then again, two very small chapter, very small chapter, sorry, not two, but one, that is quarterly management. We call it QECM, quarterly earnings call management. And then government accounting we have included along with theoretical chapter. Correct. So out of this theoretical chapter, you will have to pay extra attention. And whenever you read the theoretical chapter, I would always advise you, First of all, try to have a good look over your what we call past two attempts. Try to analyze that which are the chapters, theoretical one, which are containing what we call more MCQs. So that will help you a lot in going through because when you will study the MCQ, you will visualize that what sort of MCQs can be asked from this particular topic or from this particular para. This that's a way to actually go through the theoretical aspects that right? we are going to cover through the lecture series every gamut correct don't worry about it but point is that i'm trying to tell you how you should go about it now coming over to the next one it is a formidable one this is my third volume which we supply to the students who subscribe to our courses volume three nds and herein we have included all the nds which have been issued by the institute but we have left india's 102 because we have already included that in the practical category correct as far as india is concerned we have covered and Try to ask and consult from your what we call friends. So they will tell you that almost every standard we have done near about 20 to 25 case studies. Correct. And without that, you could not have attempted the questions in the examination because at the time when we were doing, some of the students were telling, sir, you are doing a lot and this much is not given in our module. And the same student later on are thanking us for what we call having done the standard the way we did ultimately. So anyway, accounting policies, changes in accounting estimates is the pretty e easy standard. Income taxes, it is similar to the standard 
which you did in your earlier phases of education AS22. But problem is that, as you know, in under AS22, we used to deal with the concepts like deferred tax assets and deferred tax liability. However, in order to compute deferred tax assets and deferred tax liability, we used to actually go through income approach. However, in under AS12, we will again deal up with the issues related to deferred tax assets and deferred tax liability. But this time, instead of what we call adopting income approach, we shall adopt balance sheet approach. That is the biggest difference. So it's a pretty tough standard. And the property plant and equipment is quite vital. But the most important one is revenue from contracts with the customer. And the student have a little bit of a problem to understand and comprehend uh, this particular standard I have seen. And then leases. Very important standard. Correct. So... And besides that, other standard in day 121, you can deal with this particular standard if you have got a very good knowledge of your AS11 also, correct? Likewise, in day 23 should not be a very bothering task for you because this standard in day 23 is very similar to the existing accounting standard 16, which you have already done in your earlier phases of education, correct? Similarly, in the AS36, in the S36 impairment of asset. This is standard. Obviously, this standard is also important from the examination point of view. These are very vital standards, which I have marked towards your left side, correct? Even property, plant and equipment and income taxes. So, impairment of asset. You can easily deal with this particular standard if you have got a very good knowledge of your existing accounting standard. That is AS28. AS28 and impairment of asset that is in AS36 are very, very similar. Uh, correct. Similarly, intangible. Sorry, I told earlier impairment of asset. Impairment of asset is similar to your AS28. So, you can easily manage this standard if you have got a very good knowledge of AS28. And similarly, as far as intangible assets are concerned, you can manage it if you have a good knowledge of your existing accounting standard AS26. As I clear to you, likewise, in order to understand leases quite well, I would love you to go through AS19 by yourself. In fact, when we teach in the class actually in leases, we always revise all the concepts of AS19, which we have already done in the past phases of education just to recap the things so that the students are in a better position to comprehend the same. So, similarly operating segment, in order to have a good understanding, you can understand all the concepts of operating segment provided you have a good knowledge of existing standard AS17 because you have already gone through all these standards. So, before you start studying operating segment, I would love you to go through this so that you understand all the concepts very easily and in one go. Fair value me measurement is a purely theoretical sort of what we call standard and it will tell you how the fair value of what we call assets and liabilities are measured and the revenue from contracts with customer. Revenue from contracts with customer, it's actually in practical life, it's a pretty long standard but at your level, institute has devoted i think three or four pages to this particular standard but in spite of that in spite of that this standard is very vital you can be sure of at least one question in every examination even in the current examination question was asked correct so these are the things the inputs i wanted to share with you so that means whenever at this particular level we want to come out with a good performance with a strong performance and with a sort of performance which amazes not only others but to us also, you need to have, as I've already told you, three things. One, you need to have a good idea of your syllabus. You need to have a good segmentation of the syllabus into practical part, theoretical part, India's part. Besides that, you need to have a very good strategy to how to actually cover up. Now, you have done everything. How you are going to cover up? Now, I cannot talk about how others are going to cover up. I can talk about actually how we cover up. So, point here is that the uniqueness of our course is three-phase coverage. I've already gave, told you that besides what we call giving, these three ebooks will provide you a hard copy of my, uh, hard copy of my book is lying towards my right side. Anyway, besides these three ebooks, volume one, volume two, volume three, we will give you one hard copy also, correct? We, that hard copy of the book, in fact, come, uh, combines all these three segments, that, that a hard copy will be given only in one volume and that particular book contains all these three volumes correct besides that it also contains the hard copy also contains another volume that is mcq so point here is that 
Besides these three e-books, we are going to supply you a hard copy of our edition and the book is published by Commercial Law House Publications, also available at Amazon and all various other sites, correct? Now, point here is that I was talking about that how we cover up all these things. As far as our courses are concerned, we have a three-phase coverage. Now, three-phase coverage, a student must have noticed that first of all, we always devote time to cover coverage of the module. When we say coverage of the module, it means the study material and the books which we supply to the student. Obviously, when we are giving you three volumes, that means it is covering every gamut of your module. It is covering every other dimension, every possible question which may be tossed up in the examination and a student have already noticed that. You can go to the Telegram channel. You can see the views of the student after the what we call they have attempted the paper. Correct. Then past year questions. I, again, I do not want to sound very arrogant. But I was the only faculty, in fact, I am the only faculty who gave solutions to the past year questions because institute did not give the what we call complete solution and no other one actually uh, took up the gamut uh, to, give the, to give the solutions. So I started this series and nearly uh, 11 or 15 videos I uploaded and covered the entire past series and which was very helpful to the student fraternity. Then revisionary sessions besides that, that being we are going to cover the course in three phases. One comprehensive, very comprehensive coverage, most potent, penetrative and polished coverage. Besides that, we are going to give you the past year paper solutions and besides the revisionary sessions, no doubt about that. This three phase coverage is the uniqueness of our course. And what we say, we always adhere to that, correct? It is not just for the sake of saying. Then similarly, I just told you earlier, not only your lectures should be very strong, potent, but they must be what we call supplemented by a very systematic sequence of a well-framed module. So you will sit, when you will go through what we call our module, you will find that we have given solution to each and every question. So that works as an asset in case if the question which we have given to you for homework, in case if you come across any difficulty, you can look into the solution quite well. And at the same time, all it is it is the well researched and st highly structured i should say what we call study material because we keep an eye over the pattern of the examination accordingly actually we revise our modules correct now i have already told you it is the potent penetrative and exam oriented and latest updated well researched study material i have already talked about that correct so these are the things which uh actually enhances the value of this particular course which is supplied by us so now coming over to all these things once you have finished the course we will take care of your revisionary sessions you need not require to worry about often a student asks sir what about the doubt details first of all we can assure you i have got the largest number of students for cfr in india but in spite of that i hardly receive any call to be very honest with you of what extent any query but i'm not saying that the query cannot arise but we will we have got such a high amount of experience that you will suddenly notice that you are not at all coming across any queries but these are the three levels which in case a rarest or rare square cases in case if you confront any sort of what we call uh, problem to understand or you have some issues with respect to the technological part because uh, after all we are connected with the technology so you can contact us through these mediums correct and besides that, I would love you to immediately subscribe the channel Sinja Wilkins. And besides that, we have another channel CMA Virtual Planet. And then this is our Telegram channel. You must go through it. You take the reviews of the student who gave to us after what we call having attempted the recent uh, examinations. Correct. And besides that, for MCQ, I have already told you the hard book which we are going to supply. The fourth division of the hard book, because the entire book is divided into four divisions. Volume one contains practical part. Volume two contains, I told you, theoretical part. Volume three is related to India's and volume four is related to MCQ. The hard book I'm talking about, which we are going to supply. Correct. Besides the e-books, which I have already shown you. So MCQ, lots of M MCQs have been given. So you can go through that and that will help you a lot. And moreover, we always take MCQ sessions. I nearly what we call 16 sessions of mcqs i took and uploaded on the uh, youtube so this is welkins virtual planet cma exclusive and i have written here most prescribed and brisk selling courses without an iota of doubt so these are our english version cma courses correct 
So, because this particular session is primarily meant for uh, students who feel comfortable with the English, uh, and as I keep on saying, especially for a student from the southern region and the eastern region, or for that distance from any region, and who feel comfortable with this particular language. So, as far as English course or CFR is concerned, that is code named as Supreme, while the Hindi version is code named as Zaheen. Correct. And obviously, needless to add that these are our regular premium courses. Obviously, another point which may interest you is regarding the duration. See, 190 to 200 hours we are going to take up to cover up your what we call first phase. That means the full coverage of the course in the most comprehensive manner. Correct. And then we are going to take another 25 hours for what we call your past year coverage. That means your revision is starting in the form of coverage of the past year papers. And then we will take 25 to 15 to 25 more hours for your revisionary and MCQ sessions. Correct. Logically, 200 hours will orient you more than enough to tackle the examination. But to enhance your skills and capability, we are going to add another what we call 25, 15 hours to make sure that each one of you, as I told you, should come out with a sort of performance which gives you pleasure and satisfaction to us. Correct. So besides that, these are our product. If some of your friends are in group two or group one, you can recommend them for what we call our English version courses. That is up to you. Correct. And now how to buy the course that is another point if some of you are interested correct this is the number which you need to note down carefully and you can contact at this particular number better time is 6 pm to 8 pm only in case in case it may happen sometime the call is not picked up simply whatsapp your message that you are interested in buying our course kindly send the details to us so staff will revert back to you correct besides that it is in your interest to download this particular app also and these are the reviews of the student fraternity and i need to require to tell you i'm very uh, very thankful to the student fraternity who have given so much of love affection and of course so much of of i should say position to me where i'm today so uh and there are many more reviews of the students in the telegram the, these are, i cannot go through all these reviews but what i'm telling is that you can go through the reviews by yourself through the telegram because those are the latest reviews from the latest examinations correct so these are the things which i just wanted to share with you and another last point which i'm going to share with you is that some of you might be pretty happy to notice that as far as english version is concerned we might start a start a live series a live series we might start with some conditions when i say with some condition for example in the live classes let us say i have taken the class today so the video will remain open till what we call 40 till for 24 hours after that we are not going to accept any request as far as live classes are concerned we are planning right now and regarding that i am going to actually put up a separate video uh, and soon it will appear so as far as live classes are concerned so with some conditions and condition will be written over there in the description you can go through chat correct so obviously the pricing of that will be quite low in comparison to the regular courses correct but these are in my personal opinion without sounding any biasness i can tell you oh and you can trust me these are the best possible courses for you correct so keeping into account the pattern of the examination and the level of the examination so hope that this particular session might have given you a little bit of inputs if not very high amount of inputs correct so let me know your feedback and definitely would love to hear from you and your suggestion and more and one more important point i would love to hear from you the timings which you would love to prefer regarding the live sessions in case if i would start correct most probably i'm thinking in the evening and either in the early morning so you can give me in your feedback regarding that so that i can get a fair idea that which is the best time to take up the live classes okay then on such count we take leave of you and it's uh, almost nine o'clock here in delhi so it's time to say good night so with all the blessings in the world now i end up this particular i close up this particular session okay then <laughs>